All right, guys, this is a, a slightly newer horse for me, and it's actually very new to eventing. It's, she's done a, uh, a little bit of jumping in Europe, and I've just started introducing her to uh, some cross-country exercises. Obviously, her education as a show jumper is, is pretty good. She's jumped sort of meter 10, meter 15, but this whole new concept of cross-country uh, riding is, is brand new to her. What I'm trying to work out, and it's not going to be in one session or two sessions, this is going to be over a length of time, is some of the sort of rules or ideas that I have for cross country. To me, I've got to have a deal with all my horses cross country schooling and cross country comp competition, is that I'm never going to ask them to do something they're not capable of doing. That's my deal. And um, I'm also going to be in a place where if she's a bit unsure or a little bit uncertain, it's going to be an easy enough jump that I can sort of pony club her over it. And she gets to the other side and she goes, oh, that wasn't too bad at all. Hang on, that was easy. And then the next time it's a little bit easier and the third or fourth time is like, this is fun. And that is sort of the, the name of the game, I think, for cross country training. So guys, I'd always try and encourage my horses just to walk in and out of the water jump. It's the moment you go from dry ground to water is when they get a little bit nervous. And what I gotta try and teach these young horses is that every water jump that we go to is only about four inches deep. Where if you look at this pond to a, uh, to a wild animal, they wouldn't know if it's four inches deep or four feet deep. And uh, every time that we go in and out, she understands that uh, the level of water is quite low. After that, I think she's got to start understanding with a little bit of a bank out of water that the bank's actually slightly higher than she realizes. Her eye measures the height of the bank from the top of the water to the height of the bank. What sometimes these young horses don't quite get is that their ankles are submerged and ever so gently just walking up and down this step. And again, trying to get her to the place where she understands that she just hops up it. And I love doing this exercise in walk. It just gives them a real moment to read the fence, to understand it. And if they sort of miscalculate the height of the jump, they sort of just trip. They don't sort of stumble or fall over. Grab some mane. And just to give you some feedback, I'd always go up the bank before I go down the bank. I think horses uh, find it easy to go up and then going down, a little bit unsure, but I'm not gonna represent. And she's pretty good, but she leapt in a little bit. I'm gonna do it a couple more times till she learns just to lower herself into the, into the water just gently. I feel like doing this all at walk, they have a real clear understanding of what's happening. Good girl. At the same time, guys, I'm uh, practicing my down bank position, slightly longer reins, staying behind the motion and trying to, trying to repeat this posture over and over and over again where I don't even have to think about it. Right, guys, I think with this green horse, what would be smart to do is a sort of a little bit of a mini course out on cross country schooling. I'm going to pick out a, a bunch of easier forgiving type fences. And for this type of exercise, I'm more concerned on how the horse is traveling between the fences, trying to get it to sort of look up and look for its fences. This girl travels with her head a little bit low, so I'm just going to gently try and encourage her, her ears to come up, her nose to come out. I'm not going to get too worried about what lead she's on and I'm going to encourage just smoothness between the jumps. My gut feeling is I'm going to be hovering around novice training speed, trying to just gently encourage her to jump the fences out of stride. I'm also got to be ready to react to see how she uh, reacts to like the trees and the spookiness or there's some other horses here that she might might pay a bit of attention to. So it's all these little factors that I'm gonna try and work on. And again, 
this will go towards uh, how I'm expecting her to c compete. How am, I, how am I going to expect her to be at the show? How do I, is she going to spook at the jump judges? Is she going to be a bit nappy or forward thinking or vice versa? Is she going to get really excited and clear out? And I'm just going to really work hard at her rideability and her balance. And maybe we'll do this with a more experienced horse in a moment. And this horse will probably jump some bigger fences and go at a higher speed. But we'll just give this girl a go around 10 or 15 fences. So one thing to remember guys is horses aren't mind readers. And this horse, there's a bunch of jumps in this, in this field and she doesn't quite know which one we're going to be heading towards next. So I've got to be super obvious. I'm going to try and get this brown and tan one here. Good girl. Very good, now just stay easy. Steady her a bit and try and lift her frame a little. Well done. Trying to encourage a little bit of a gallop now like she would at the show. Take on these two slightly bigger fences. Add a little more pace. Good girl. Again, little pace. And a little bit of a turning exercise now. Just gently seeing if I can steady her. Ask for a little bit of a turn after this jump. A good girl. Not going to worry too much about her lead. Again, another little turn here. A little bit of a surprise jump. Get in a little deep. And then maybe we'll do two more fences and trying to make these last two fences as smooth as we can. Maybe heading up a little more towards sort of training level speed. We'll keep her straight, lifting her frame up. Ask for one with a little bit of pace. Saw a good one there. So guys, I want you to try and relate today's exercises with your own horse and your own training facility. What I'm trying to create here with my horse is bravery and this feeling that she's gonna take on fences without me sort of, without her knowing where she's exactly going. This also gives me a little bit of confidence and self-belief that at the competition, she's willing to sort of see a fence that she's not, she hasn't seen before, she, she hasn't jumped before, and then she's gonna jump it out of stride and be looking for a next fence. And again, guys, this is learnt behavior, this is trained behavior, uh, and I think once the horse picks up the idea, they just learn to love it. So this is Morris. He's a little bit further along than the last horse. He's, uh, he's at the preliminary level, so he's probably one or two years ahead of Vivian in his training. He's a big, bold, brave horse. Uh, I love him. He, uh, he feels like he'd jump over a bus if he had to. For cross-country schooling, uh, he's almost a little bit too gung-ho. In my training, I've got to try and not sort of let him loose at the jumps too much. Part of, uh, part of my theory with this guy is that I'm, I'm never looking for too much of a long galloping stride for, for Morris in training. Like I think that just lights him up and it explodes him. If I can, I'm gonna try and sort of always plant him in a little bit close to the jump and try not to pull back at the end. It might make the odd jump a little bit ugly where he sort of races at it and gets a bit deep. He might even bump a jump or two with his feet. Uh, to me, this is a sort of a way that he understands that he's got to back off the jump and look after himself. I'm not sort of going to hoik him off the jump. Um, with doing a little bit of a course similar to Vivian, I want to try and really work at keeping him settled. Uh, he's obviously at the preliminary level, so 
I'd probably not go to my maximum speed. This horse can really gallop, it can really jump, and I'm slowly but surely trying to teach him just to take his time, and, and he's got to look after himself. So, you know, the method in riding him is trying to educate him on all the complicated jumps, but I'm not going to sort of force the way through. I'm going to sort of leave him alone, and if he gets a little bit fast at the jump and a little bit deep, he might jump a bit crooked or a bit awkward, and I'm just going to have the repetition of staying behind him and, and leave him alone. And I'm hoping over time that this just settles him, backs him off a bit, and that when he sees a jump, he doesn't think fast and go, he thinks sort of slow and careful. But we'll give a little bit of a course to, um, a go now. I'll sort of commentate what I'm doing through the track. Uh, but again, trying to keep him settled, smooth, and not let him take over too much. So again, I don't think it does him any good if we just go really, really slow. We've got to try and sort of take him to a little bit of his limit where he's rolling along a bit. I'll give him a couple of small fences just to get started. And again, I'm looking for a little bit of a deep distance, especially at these little ones. It's a little bit too big. Whoa, whoa. Be easy, big fella, be easy. See, he's a hell of a jumper. Oh, now I'm just trying to keep galloping, but get him a little bit settled here. And just try and slow his pace down. I'm gonna land into a bit of a turn here just to see if I can back him up. We did one right turn, one left turn. I've got to find places of the course here where I can sort of slightly let him go a bit. And just say, listen pal, I don't want to fight with you. I'll try these two red boxes over here. I'm going to jump them out of stride, but not trying to not get a big fast distance. So just easing off here. Good boy. And again, easing off. And you can see now he's just starting to take a breath. Again, trying to just coast a little bit here. And again, not showing the jump too early. You can see the more and more I do with him, the more and more settled he's getting. He's getting a little bit tired, which is just perfect. We'll give him one more fence and then give him a break. Oh. Good boy. Hey, hey, hey. So to me, I'm trying to I'm really trying to come up with a system where it's, even these bold and brave, I need that for five star. So I actually don't want to take it away from him. It's sort of more trying to come up with a system where we just ever so gently smooth things over. And I'm trying not to sort of get rough and hostile and angry and seeing if I can just do jump after jump after jump. And hopefully he sort of gets a little bit tired and settles right down. So as you can see, it started off a bit wild but towards the end there, he was, uh, he was thinking and he was backing up at the jumps. Yeah, sometimes when you have a horse that really races at a jump, you've got to ask yourself, is my horse just loving this and, and bold and brave and firing at the jump? Or is it a sign of loss of confidence and panic? Uh, for me, this guy, he's pretty brave and he's bold. I think he's ultra confident, almost too confident but there would be some horses that start racing at jumps and it's a sign that they're a little bit nervous and unsure. So you've got to really be the master at feeling what's going on underneath you. Are you getting a, a bold, brave feeling or are you getting a nervous sort of charge at the fence? 
If you're getting a nervous charge at the fence, you might have to tone it down a little bit, seek out some small offences and regain your horse's confidence. So in this girl's uh, limited experience as a cross country horse, she's never seen a jump in the water. Obviously I've jumped a fence like this out on the grass uh, pretty well, it's a narrow fence, but the real challenge with this jump is that it's actually submerged in the water, the takeoffs in the water, the landings in the water. It's quite a uh, unique experience for a very, very green horse. For me, teaching this horse to jump at the first time, I'm gonna come on quite a long approach have plenty of leg on, and I'm going to expect the unexpected. I'm, I'm deep in my heart. I feel like at the, at the last stride, she's going to go, whoa, and I'm going to try and stay behind her. She goes two inches to the right. I'm going to take her two inches to the left. If she stalls, I'm going to spur her. Um, I'm going to try and find a way to get the job done. Even if she sort of really slowed down and I had to pony club her over it, I think that's better. Once she sort of gets over it once, the second time will be a little bit easier. Uh, the third time will be happy days. And then after that, it'll be a walk in the park. So again, nice long approach. I might take on one warm up jump just so she's thinking jumping and then give her a, a quite a balanced together, collected, connected ride to the jump. Just giving her more strides to understand it, more strides to read it and trying to not sort of lengthen and yara at the jump. I feel like that freaks them out a bit and it also makes it a little bit easier for them to run out. Let's give it a crack. All right, so back here, I'm trying to get her eye on this jump. I'm gonna sit back, nice and collected. She actually jumped that really well. That a girl. Might be slightly harder the other way where the, the jump is very close to the the entry, it sort of almost looks to me like she'll jump in and do one stride in the water, then hop her off. And again, a little bit balanced back here, a little bit steady. Very good. <laughs> 